points in relation to this word. So he's going to explain expiation and propitiation. Let's think about these words, what these words mean. Then beginning with the word expiation. The prefix X, all right? <coughs> the prefix X, that's what he's going to try to tell us about. I, I like the way Asis Prol does things uh, because that's the way I deal with things. I tend to separate the words so that we get to the original meaning. Means out of or from. That's what this means. Out of or from. from. Ex. Ex military. Out of the military. Right? Ex wife. Used to be my wife, but no longer my wife. Well, God forbid. I hope that doesn't happen anytime soon or ever at all. Okay then, so expiation has to do with removing something or taking something away. Hmm, that's interesting. In biblical terms, it has to do with taking away guilt through the payment of a penalty. So, I, through payment of a penalty or the offering of an atonement. By contrast, so there's a contrast between that and that, yes? By contrast, propitiation has to do with the object of expiation. Right? Expiation has to do with the person. Huh? The sinner. It is what is done for the sinner. The sin belongs to who? The sinner. If that sin is no longer visible, it's no longer punishable, it is the benefit of that sinner. So expiation focuses on the sinner. Alright? The target of the atonement. You know point? But as this Paul is telling us, propitiation has little to do with the sinner. It has everything to do with God. That is the beneficiary is God. Who is being made happy? God. Whose wrath is taken away? God. Who is being given the prize? God. There's no point now. So he's saying the two words are almost the same, but their difference comes in one is aimed at the person and the other is aimed at God. But it's the same act of an atonement. The offering of Christ has two effects. Effect number one, it absolves the sinner from the guilt of his sin. All right? It, 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 it saves him. In that sense, the sinner has been expiated. But the other effect is, it makes God not angry. It appeases God. God has been propitiated. But the item is one and the same. Did you get the point now? So tell me how I was still right. <laughs> I still maintain the original passion of, yeah. of your argument. Mm. Because it's true that the uh, expiation here mm -hmm. is an act of uh, cleansing mm. the sinner. To an extent that he may be made right with God. But it was not perfect. True. Yeah? True. The perfection came with Christ. With the sacrifice of Jesus Christ Himself. That is correct. That is That's correct. what I say. Uh, I'm trying to reason that. In the same way, I would, uh, I would like the best example I would give would be probably about the the security officers mm. who cover the the, the, the politicians. Mm -hmm. You see, they risk their lives because of this person. Correct. In, in, in other words, the animals that were, were being slaughtered mm. risked their, their life because of the sinner. Mm. But it was a temporary reprieve. Uh, reprieve. Uh, so the, the, the perfect reprieve came in the person of Jesus Christ. So are you then saying to me that expiation is temporary, propitiation is permanent? <laughs> I'm, I'm just trying to kind of unpack your argument. Is that what you're saying to me? That's a Is thing. that the difference you see? That's, I think, uh, what I'm saying. Ah. And I think there you would be wrong. Because 
there was propitiation even in the Old Testament. Yeah. You get my point? Yeah. That at that point at which the animal gave its life for the sinner, God at that particular time was propitiated. And the sinner expiated. Both were temporary in that sense. But they were not temporary in the sense that they are in themselves temporary as in time bound, but they were temporary in the sense that they looked forward to the permanent sacrifice of Christ. Again, the sacrifice of Christ does both things. It expiates, but it also propitiates in a permanent way. The sacrifice of the Old Testament expiated and propitiated, but in a provisional way. I think that's the way we say it. Provisional way. Okay? Um, so I'm thanking you that you think I was right, but I'm correcting myself. I think I missed that subtle distinction which uh, Dr. Sproul now here supplies to us. I think that is quite important to make. Expiation has emphasis on the sinner. Propitiation has emphasis on God. The sinner benefits the sense that his sin has been atoned for, has been covered, has been therefore expiated. He doesn't suffer the guilt and the penalty of his sin because the animal has done so. But in that process happening, there is another process happening at the same time. That is, God's anger has been placated, has been removed. He has been appeased. He has been made no longer angry. In that sense, he has been propitiated. So that the subtle distinction between the two words become really the object of each. The object of expiation is man. The object of propitiation is God. So that then becomes the distinction between propitiation and expiation. They are old English words, and I think, as Mr. Sproul here says, we, we struggle with those words because we don't use them in our everyday English. Even Englishmen don't use these words quite often, you see. Uh, they are kind of words that have fallen to disuse. And, um, yeah. Ali, does that help? Yes. Okay.